I'm P. Thug, and I'm one half of the duo Chromio. Today we're in Burbank, California. Huge studio history here. Burbank in the 70s was known for the players, the studios. It was like, you know, it was a crazy infrastructure for music here. So we're surrounded by studios, music stores. It's, it's kind of amazing. I didn't know this existed. We found this studio three and a half years ago and this hasn't moved since the 70s. There's still mustard velvet on the walls, nice cork like you can see. I got in here and it smelled of cigarettes and armpits, which is part of the charm, if you ask me. And that's that's kind of in the aesthetic of the band. We, we do everything kind of old school and we love vintage instruments, vintage looking furniture, vintage establishments. So we're trying to recreate whatever we see on record covers that we that we love and artists that we admire from the 70s and 80s we started using cubase two years ago on the last record and up until two years ago we were still using a pentium 2 with 11 gigs of memory in the whole computer including your operating system um, and we would we just we were stuck so we had to do the jump and move on to Mac and move on to, you know, modern stuff because you you want to work with people. And I was still engraving CDs to exchange files. And then they removed CD drives from Macs, <laughs> you know, a couple of years ago. And I was like, all right, man, this is time. We had to go from the Pentium 2 to Pro Studios who were asking you for stems and then track vocals because we certainly couldn't track vocals on the Pentium 2. And then there's some point where I'd show up to a studio with a CD and I'd be like, I don't have anything to read this. Like, send me a link or something. Don't you have a USB stick? Like, what are you doing? And Dave and I looked at each other and we're like, all right, it's time to switch. And then starts the search for the best program out there for our needs. Um, and Cubase, you know, Cubase was the one. We, we were, you know, collaborating with people and we looked at the different DAWs they use at the production level. So we were working with Ian Kirkpatrick and he was using Cubase. And then we glanced over and I was like, hey. And Dave was like, huh, looks simple, great. And then he was, and then he made it very complex also, you know. He was using it as a modern tool for writing but we saw it as like, we can make that very simple for us. And you know, that's the beauty, how flexible it is. Simple interface, you can customize it as much as you want. You can make, and, and by that time, keep in mind, we have 10 years of, of experience producing. So our brains are set to work in certain ways. We can just change entirely everything. So we were like, okay, we need we work visually and we work in blocks in our heads. And Cubase was the one who enabled us to make the interface look like a Pentium 2. You know, you can customize the colors, you can customize the windows, how they look, how they feel, you know, how big your piano roll is. That's that was really important. We work with MIDI so much that that has to be the focus. And we work visually, so we want to be able to look at the screen, understand what's going on in the length of the song and in the minutia of that one bar that you're working on. And Cubase gave us that sort of dual like macro view and micro view also. You know, I spent like maybe a day customizing everything to what I wanted, the, the right colors and everything. And we were like, that's it. You know, Cubase, Cubase is the one. So in the studio, we have two main areas where we work. We have a production studio where all of the tracks come out of. So all the drum machines, all the synthesizers are in there. And that room is 90% just for music. That's where we start the demos. That's where we sing each other ideas. That's where our phones are plugged in with, with music. That's where our record player is plugged in for references if we want to play each other stuff on the phone. We do most of that stuff over there. Um, that's where all the ideas are started. 
the demos are built. This room here is where we track vocals, live guitars, drums, basses, a bit of a piano. You know, we have a CP70 in there, a clavinet. Those are all things that you might. Everything that's kind of live and it, that's not into the realm of a DAW or an electronic instrument or a synthesizer. This is where it would, you know, it looks and feels more like in this, how they would work in the 70s. Basically the typical guy looking at you in the control room window. Yeah. Or, you know, more cowbell. Or <laughs> we work a lot outside of the box with analog synthesizers, drum machines. We can't sort of get away from the, the, the analog synth sound, the, the warmth of it. The way these synth synths react and wake up every day in a different mood is part of our sound. Having a sequencer and a DAW that allows us to be current, have modern technology available, but still be powerful enough to let us use the setup that's around us in a really efficient way. I think we have like 23 synths plugged in at all times into the board. They're all connected MIDI, they're all plugged in. Any synth you touch or drum machine you touch, you will hear it play and you can you can load it up on a track, on a MIDI track. In Cubase, you can rename all your MIDI ports to anything you want. And since every one of our synths is on a different MIDI port, it makes it really easy and fast to load up, load up a MIDI track. I know which controller I want. I know which synth I want to use. And it's a very like, you know, efficient way of just loading up. Boom, I got my controller in front of me. I want this to go to the Juno. And if I want to change it, all I have to do is change the output. It will go to another synth. I'll, I'll go to, you know, the Mini Moog or the Prophet 5 or something. That's a huge part also of why we chose to, to go with Cubase. Because, you know, there's, you have 25 synths. If you spend, spend half of your time finding the right port, you were wasting three minutes of important creative time that has to be like, immediate right away you have a sound in head it's already loaded on your on your juno because you know we pre-program presets patches when one of us has an idea we already know this you remember that sound that's on the prophet 5 and i'm like yes it's patch number 22. i need to go there right away not spend you know time and that's also part of why all these synths are all connected uh, permanently. If you waste time, oh, let me pull the Profit 5 out. Seven minutes later, oh, let me plug the MIDI in. You know, you've just wasted 20 minutes to get to that one patch. It's just a waste of time. So everything is set up, ready to go. And if the DAW can't follow what I, what I want to do, then, you know, I, it's, it's, might as well change. One of the other great functions of Cubase is the uh, track versions. When you're throwing quick ideas together, sometimes you want to go back different, you know, the first thing you tried just on a whim like that and having different versions in the same track and not accumulating tracks for the different stuff that you've tried out is really crucial because you you let the drums play you let the bass play and then you try something real quick move on to the next just really easy one key command boom a new track version try another thing again another quick key command and then you have five six seven eight different versions of that thing you're trying to find but you can't still quite access and then once you're done you go through all your track versions and like, hey, wait, this first thing I did was actually the best. And you can easily go back to that. And it's not only useful for that, it's also useful uh, for when we work. Uh, so when you work in MIDI and you do, let's say we have a MIDI track with a drum tracks pattern, a sequential circuit drum tracks, which is an external drum machine. So you've got all your instruments are on the same MIDI track. Your kick, your snare, your hi-hat, it's all in there. Uh, and at some point, you want to print this separately. The great, great function of Cubase is the dissolve parts. You'll be able to recognize instantly the different pitches that you have stuff happening on, and you're 
it'll automatically split it into different tracks or different track versions, depending on what you want. That makes it way more efficient than copying the file over, copying the track over, deleting every time what you don't want, what you want to stay, you know. Um, two really crucial functions, track versions and dissolve part. Why does Chrome use Cubase? This is the most efficient. So I should keep it tight. I got a main squeeze, so I better squeeze it right. You got the juice.